Yes, we have over here. Michaela, how are you, my friend? Pretty good, thanks. How are Fantastic. you? Fantastic. We're doing a tour of Visual Studio for Mac for .NET development. Why don't you take mm -hmm. it away? Great. Um, so, hi, my name is Michaela. I am an engineer working on Visual Studio for Mac and the Xamarin platform based out of Cambridge, Massachusetts. So today, I'm going to start off by giving you um, a quick introduction to what VS for Mac is. Um, I know a lot of you out there are using it, but some of you aren't, so I'll make sure we're all on the same page there. Um, I'll give you a quick retrospective of, of, of how we got here, um, and then I'll show then I'll show it in action so you can see all of the shiny new features and a little peek at, at, at what's coming up in the future. So Visual Studio for Mac is a .NET IDE for the Mac. It aims to provide a native experience. So if you're a Mac user, you expect your Mac apps to feel like Mac apps, and that's, that's our goal. It enables you to develop apps and games for iOS, for Android, and for web. And it's built on the same foundations as Visual Studio for Windows. So it's built on Roslyn. That's where it gets the IntelliSense and code analyzers and fixes, all the same ones you have access to on Windows. It uses MS Build as the build system, NuGet for package management, um, and various other pieces of the Visual Studio platform, and it's all built on .NET. And on, t on top of that, um, this, um, it provides support for mobile via Z Xamarin Android, Xamarin iOS, and Xamarin Forms. Uh, with .NET Core, you can do ASP.NET um, Core for web. Um, you can containerize those with Docker, and you can also do uh, so serverless with Azure Functions. And if you're doing games with Unity, um, it also has integrated support for de debugging those um, and all of the Unity-specific code completion and that kind of thing. But I'm not going to be talking so much about the individual scenarios today. I know you've heard a about a lot of those earlier. If you missed those, those are recorded. You, you can go back and see them. Um, I will be focusing on VS for Mac itself. So we launched it almost, um, almost two years ago in June of 2017. And that initial release had support for all of these core scenarios that I described. Um, including all of the C-sharp Intel IntelliSense and refactoring and debugging that you would expect for those. Um, a couple months later, we added support for .NET Core 2 when that released. Um, in October, we added uh, Docker support so you could con containerize your apps and deploy them to Azure. We then overhauled the iOS signing experience, making that much smoother so you no longer had to manually provision your devices um, and so on. Um, in 7.4, uh, we made some upgrades to C Sharp in Telesense, full support for C Sharp 7.1, um, and we made the iOS deployment and debugging experience it's much easier because you can now do that wirelessly over Wi-Fi. So if you wanted to have um, a headset or, or an accessory plugged in, um, for example, you could now do that while you were debugging. Um, 7.5 in May of, May of last year was a very big release in that we added ed editor config support. So you could share your settings um, of, about how things should be formatted and so on. Um, across your team and also across Mac and Windows. So your whole team could have consistent style settings. Um, we also ported the Razor and uh, TypeScript and JavaScript and uh, those in Intel IntelliSense experiences from Windows, the exact same um, code. In 7.6, we added support for publishing Azure Functions for, ser for serverless support. In 7.7, we made it much easier to discover the availability of quick fixes and refactorings via the light bulb. 
And that brings us to 7.8, the, the um, last of the seven series, which was mostly focused on performance and re re reliability. Though over the whole 7x uh, lifecycle, we, um, we have made uh, major perfor performance and reliability improvements in every release because we've heard that those are, are very important to, to everyone. So that brings us to today. We are releasing version 8.0, which is Visual Studio 2019 for Mac. And so I'm just going to go straight into a demo. So here I have um, the Smart Hotel sample um, that some of you may have seen from uh, GitHub. And if we go over to, um, so the way this is, tr is structured is that we have a client app, which is written in J JavaScript. Um, and then the backend app uh, of the web app is all written in, in the .NET Core 2 C Sharp. And uh, if we go into the client app, you can actually um, see uh, down here in the source files, you can see we have uh, JavaScript files, and you have all of the in in IntelliSense that you would expect there. And we have um, some uh, SAS uh, styles here. And again, there's, um, there's full IntelliSense for those two. And if we run this app, It's going to open up the website um, it built, and it's going to open up in, in the, the browser here. So it takes a second to load. And once it's loaded, you can see the website here. Now there's this, this, li this little area here um, is actually pulling these, these testimonial tweets from a back-end service that's written in C Sharp. So I'm just going to go and take a look at that. And, that, and so I open the, glo the global search with command period. That is the quickest way to get to any file. You just have to type a, a, a part of the class name or a part of the file name. You can use camel case casing. Um, I definitely recommend using that for jumping around between files and classes. So I'm going to open the positive tweet service, and this is where that tweet comes from. So if I place a breakpoint in here and go back to the web browser and refresh it, you will see that it hits it hits the breakpoint as expected. But this currently just has one single hard-coded um, tweet in there. So what I want to do is make it a little is to have a little more variety, so it's not all always showing the same thing. But first, I'd actually like to show you the editor config support, because this is super neat. It makes it really easy to, to uh, keep your code consistent. So um, as you can see here, um, this is being assigned to a var. Um, but some people don't, don't like var. They think it, it makes the code hard, harder to read. Um, I disagree with them, but if I have someone on that team and, I, and if, if the person on that team is setting the style, for example, they might go into edit to config. And we can see here that it, is, it has a setting to um, use var for, built, for built in types and when the type is apparent and elsewhere. It's, this is set that var should be used in all those cases. But um, I'm going to change this so that instead it's going to use. It's not going to, it, it, it says that var should not be used. And this is going to be a warning. And when I save this and go back to that file, and just make a slight, just touch the file so it reanalyzes, you can see here that there's now a, a squiggle on this that, tell, that tells you that we should be using an explicit type instead of var. So I'm going to just, um, and you can also see the l l light bulb hit. The light bulb here makes it easy to uh, see when these things are, are available. And I'm going to just uh, 
or you can access that via Alt Enter, which is uh, my favorite, my favorite keyboard shortcut. It makes a lot of things very easy. And just hit Enter, and it changes that to um, the ex explicit type. So there's a whole load of these of of, of these analyzers and fixes, and you can find them very e very easily through this uh, light bulb. Um, I'm just going to go and change that back because I think var is great, and I want people to use it everywhere. So we go back here, um, touch the file, touch the file again. And you can see that now it's suggesting that the name can be simplified, and we have the reverse transformation there. Um, and as you could see in the uh, in the edge config file, there's a huge number of settings that control all of the analyzers, and these are supported across both Windows and 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 Mac. But yeah, so I'm going to go and uh, ran randomize our tweets a, lit a little more. So um, here's a snippet I created earlier. And I'm also going um, to add some sample tweets here. Um, because it's not a real uh, hotel, I asked our PM team to give us to get to get to give me some tweets, and so these are their real Twitter handles. Uh, you can follow their, them all and tell them how much you like VS for Mac or or things you don't like, things you'd like us to add. Um, so check out check out their 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 Twitters. So here we have our tweets, and so we're just going to get random, and we're going to return testimonials of get random. Okay, um, and also this is a local f function here. Um, oh, one second. Okay, so var testimonial. And then I'm going to use the uh, quick fix to deconstruct that. And you can see that um, because these aren't actually being used yet, they're, they're grayed out. But I'll be using them in just a second. So now I'm going to just return a new customer testimonial, where the customer name is handle and text. Text is the tweet. There we go. And I use a, a local function here, but you you can you can actually see um, one one of the new Ro Roslyn three fixes to convert that to a method, um, and we could also say convert that to a block body if you prefer that. Okay, so we have this here. Um, gonna go and build that with command K and run it. There we go. And it's running. And here we can see we actually don't have any tweets at all. So um, something must have got wrong, gone wrong. It's um, trying to asynchronously load that. We have a little animation there. So let's let's go back and see what happened. So um, I'm going to set a breakpoint in there and run this again. Here we go. And when I step over doesn't go anywhere. So let me just add a quick exception catch point that'll break on every exception and repeat that. There we go. It's an argument out of range exception on get item. So I didn't actually limit the range of my random numbers. So let's go in here. And I'm going to just stop this. 
and get random. Next is actually going to limit that to to the um, length of the list. Oh, but that was static, so let's just make this. Let's make this not static. So it can access that now. And you can see also here, we get, we get, we're getting some hints that we could make this read only. Make sure we don't accidentally re remove it or something. I'm going to run this. Just remove the breakpoint so we don't hit that again. Reload this. Oh, one second. Oh, I had my catch point still in place, so let's just delete that and continue. And it's loading. Just takes a second while it starts up the server. Um, there we go. And so now we have a, ran a random tweet here. And if we refresh it, we'll get a different one, hopefully, unless the random number gen ge generated decides to return the same value. Yep, so now we've uh, got something a little more believable. It's not just the same, the same tweet over and over again. So that's an example of, e of editing and debugging a .NET Core app with a JavaScript and TypeScript, uh, a J JavaScript and CSS front end. But there's, um, and so this is, this is largely stuff that you've been able to do for a while with the exception of the Roslyn 3.0 fixes. Um, um, as I said, we've been focused a lot on performance and reliability. But there is one um, very exciting new feature that I want to, to show you. Um, actually, there's a, few, there's a few of them. So one of them here is you can right click on the app and do new instance. And this is something that we've heard people have been asking for quite a while because they they want to open uh, multiple solutions at once. So that is new in 2019. And now you can see our new welcome window. Um, so this makes it much easier to get straight to your code. You have your re your recent solutions, your um, open and new. And this is very sim very similar to the experience on on a. Windows now. I'm going to just open up this clients app, which is part of this whole smart hotel um, thing. So this is the iOS and Android front ends um, for the for the smart hotel um, sample. And you can see here we have the Android and iOS um, pr pr projects here, and these are all um, these have all of the pieces you'd expect: the um, pl platform specific renderers. Um, but I'm not going to go into details of those things now. Uh, the thing that I would like to show you is our new C Sharp editing experience, which I'm really excited about. This is currently in preview. So if you want to use it, um, you're going to have to go into the preferences. And you can find it here in preferences, text editor, general. And you can go and turn on support for opening c -sharp files in the new editor. And you can see here one of the new features. We have, wor we have word wrap now. So I'm going to just go and open a file so I can show you a few things. Let's just open this file here. So here we have a file. And you can see here it is the new editor Preview. So just a reminder there that you're using the preview, and you can always go and turn it back off if it causes issues. So it looks very similar, but uh, let me show you a few things that, that are new in this. So if I uh, open it in Telsense, you can see that, that it looks a bit different. Um, and this is it looks different because this is now fully native using the native Mac OS. APIs, so it behaves more more natively. So here, it's actually using um, the pink color that I have set as my highlight color in 
macOS, so it's more a more consistent part of the of the platform. You can see the tooltips here um, have that lip that little um, soft, semi-transparent, blurred background you see on Mac a lot. And this also means that uh, performance is much improved because we're not going through abstraction layers. Um, so this in enables us to take advantage of some of the G GPU accelerated hardware compositing and so on. Another one of my... Uh, favorite features uh, here is that we now have um, integrated support for the all of the macOS in, input methods. So I can do um, control command period to open up the macOS emoji and then I can search for an emoji and I can enter that. So full support for emojis um, I know a lot of people will be excited by this. Um, I certainly am. We also now have uh, we now have support for um, right to left text and uh, full bidirectional, so you can combine um, te uh, text with different directions. Um, I I'm not personally uh, familiar with the input methods for inputting these, so I'm just going to copy. Um, the name of a poet here. Yeah. So you can see this now as it this this behaves as right to, as right to left text would behave. So this new editor is built on the same core as the Windows Visual Studio editor. So this means that a lot of the little nuances of behavior will now be the same as Windows rather than slightly different. Um, this will also en enable us to bring more features from Windows to Mac um, more quickly. Like you can see here, the um, I always forget this shortcut, but there is, um, yes. Um, so we have support for the multiple carrots. That is control, option, click. And you can see that you can type into a bunch of places at the same time, which is really useful in a lot of scenarios. Um, you can also see here our um, wrapping. So as I bring this in, you'll see these lines begin to wrap around. And this, lit this little hint here that it wrapped. So this is just a taste of the things that you'll see with the new editor. Um, it's not complete yet, um, so we would love to hear your feedback, but you can always revert to the old e editor um, if you want the more polished um, experience right now. Um, this also, um, the new editor is also going to be much more accessible. Uh, accessibility is very important to us. So if I open search here, for example, this is now all native widgets. So um, you get all of the built-in macOS ac accessibility support. So to summarize, Visual Studio for Mac is, is, is a very capable tool for, for your web and mobile uh, .NET development. You have IntelliSense for C Sharp, F Sharp, TypeScript, Razor, CSS, Less, SAS, HTML5. Um, you have full analyzers and refactorings and code fixes for C Sharp um, to help you uh, write code faster and to help find problems. Uh, a rich debugger across all those scenarios. Um, I didn't cover it, but we also have X unit um, and MS test and N unit support. We also have a Git Git source control built in, and in 2019 we've also added um, a new backend for that, so it'll be more reliable. So new in 2019 we have the streamlined start window that you saw. 
that helps you get to your code much, much more quickly. We have more analyzers and fixes from Raslan. Uh, performance, lots of performance and reliability improvements. Um, that new Git backend. And we also have integrated authentication for Azure DevOps Git repositories now. Uh, major accessibility improve, improvements since, um, since 7.8. And that new editor preview that you saw. Um, I'd just like to take a, a moment aside to talk about performance and reliability a, li a little more. This is something that we've heard a lot, and it's been an ongoing focus for the team ever since our, our, our initial 7.0 release. And there have been a lot of um, impro improvements across all our releases, and it'll continue to be a focus going forwards. Um, as part of that, we've built infrastructure to help us track and identify releases uh, automatically. Um, We've also made major accessibility improve improvements across the uh, life cycle of, 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 of 7x and into 7 into 8, 8.0. And we aim to be compliant with the Microsoft accessibility sta standards by the end of year. And we've also integrated support for reporting issues through developer community. And I'd like to thank all of you who've reported issues um, to tell us what is most important to you and what you'd like us to fix or add first, because your feedback really does help us to, to identify which things are most important to work on first. And this is available to download right now. Um, you can update via the updater if you have uh, VS for Mac installed already. So I just open up the updater um, and hit install. If you don't have it yet, uh, you can install it from aka.ms forward slash vsmac. And we would definitely like to hear your feedback on the new editor. Just be aware it's in, it's in preview, and you can always switch back to the old one. Um, but we, did it. we definitely look forward to hearing your feedback um, through developer c c community. And that brings us to the end of my talk. So. Um, it's time for questions. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, there's four questions, and we're going to go through them rapid okay. fire because you covered all of your time, which is awesome. <laughs> Will Visual Studio for Mac support live share? We do not have a time frame for that right now. It's definitely feedback we've heard a lot. Um, if you could go and upvote that on, de on developer community, that would help us to, um, to prioritize that. Fantastic. Next question, where can I get the code samples from the event? So there's some code samples that you likely had. Where are you putting them? <laughs> so this, so the code samples I used are the uh, Smart Hotel 360 okay. uh, samples um, that you can get from the Microsoft org on GitHub. Fantastic. From Elizabeth, does VS for Mac 2019 support have support for dark mode? Yes, it does. Fantastic. Everyone loves the dark. Are you a dark mode? Coder? Um, it depends on the time of day. I use dark mode at night and light mode during the day. See, that's actually smart. I was sitting here thinking I need to make a choice. Um, apparently, I did not. From Jamie, what is your favorite new feature of VS for Mac 2019? Um, it's definitely the new editor. Um, it brings so many, so many uh, things to the table. Um, Emoji support in particular. Um, I know it's still in preview, um, but I'm really looking forward to that. Um, um, I, I've been using it a lot um, myself, and I'm looking forward to that uh, being the, the default in, in, in upcoming releases. Fantastic. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for your time. 